Hi, everyone, and welcome to Holt Renfrew's Awaken Autumn Campaign in Conversation. My name is Danny Roche, and I'm so happy that you're all joining me today and the three trailblazing stars of Holt Renfrew's kickoff to fall. Before we begin, I would just like to give a quick land acknowledgement. I'm located in Toronto, and I wanted to acknowledge that Toronto is located on the traditional territory of several nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. It is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. And to start off with just a quick round of introductions. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, all of you are super accomplished and inspiring, and I'm really excited to be here with you today. Um, for formality's sake, uh, I would like to give everyone a, a brief introduction and a warm welcome. So uh, we've got Karina Evans, uh, a Canadian director, actor, producer, and change maker. We've got Devery Jacobs, a Mohawk actor, filmmaker, and Indigenous rights activist. And finally, we've got Ludi Lin, who's a Chinese Canadian actor and anti Asian hate advocate. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so, all three of you star in the three part Awaken Autumn campaign, uh, which is centered around the importance of authentic storytelling and the idea of change, uh, especially in this tumultuous world. Um, and obviously, we're here today to celebrate the start of a new season, um, and I guess we'll just get right into it. And I would love to know uh, what your hopes for are this fall. Uh, this could be spiritually, in terms of work, life. Um, Devery, we'll start with you. Yeah, my hopes for this season and this fall is to really prioritize mental health. That's something that um, I made sure to take care of myself during the pandemic and um, have been uh, working with a therapist for a number of years. And um, in light of this campaign and also with work and making sure that I'm not taking on too much uh, and that I'm still creating space and carving out time for myself and, and making sure that I'm able to um, juggle all of the things um, and also, I'm hoping to eat some delicious food. It's Harvest Festival for uh, my community in that time of year, which Thanksgiving is based off of. Um, so for this fall, I'm, I'm looking for all of the, the good food and the good feels. Yes, an abundance of all of that. Uh, Karina, what are your thoughts? I loved that answer. <laughs> I loved that. Um... For me, I would say I'm beginning a new journey um, on a new TV show. So I'm in prep for that right now. And that shoots at the end of this month and, and next month. Um, and so my, my hope on that is that I will do a great job and I'll be able to honor the characters and the story and, and the amazing writing and, and the people that I'm working with and for. Um, and then personally, I would, I would hope for uh, accelerated spiritual growth in this next season. So I'm sort of approaching it with that intention. Yeah, in the in the Awaken uh, Autumn video, you mentioned that you feel most like yourself when you know you open your eyes from a meditation. Um, as someone who like wants to get more into meditation, like, do you have any advice um, for how that can like center and ground you? Um. I think it's really um, helpful for tapping into yourself and your truth and grounding yourself. Like for example, um, even before this call, what I wanna do is be able to speak um, from my heart and, and speak truthfully in that. And so a 10 minute meditation helps to remove any blocks that um, would inhibit that. Um, I also use a couple different apps. Headspace is a really good one that has amazing meditation on there, guided meditation with that. Yeah, that's great advice um, and definitely something that like I'm actively working on. Um, and Ludi, like, what are you hoping for this season? I know that we talked before the call and, and you're based in Vancouver. Um, you're working on a couple of different things now, but what can we, what are you expecting for, for the new season? I think also echoing on what Corinna has said, um, I like storytelling. So maybe some wonderful stories. Um, spending time and moments like this with friends new and old uh one of my friends is right in the next room so she's looking forward to some pumpkin spice latte so, yeah i'd take that i'd take that with some oat milk um, 
crisp breezes, cozy sweaters, walking in the parks, some sort of romance, um, just being mm. grateful, practicing a lot of gratitude, uh, being with family. And like uh, Debray was saying earlier, that uh, fall is a harvest season. So working hard. So hopefully I can hibernate in the winter time. Yes. Uh, and in, and speaking about hibernating, um, what what will you be wearing this fall? What does personal style uh, mean to you? And, and how will you transition your wardrobe over into the new season? Uh, for me, I think mostly that's pretty subtle for me because I think I'll be on set most of the time. So I'm just going to get up in my PJs and then walk to set and uh, let them dress me. Rest of the time, <laughs> just something, something comfortable, something that feels nice. It's the texture, you know, like this is a, this is a nice sweater because I like the texture. Just something that feels like um, I get some warmth and like someone's constantly hugging me. Yeah, and Devery, what about you? Um, in the video or the campaign video, you were wearing that amazing cord coat. Um, any well, must have fall pieces? That's mine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's definitely up there. I think autumn as a season is my favorite, just as a whole with like the changing leaves and the cooler weather. Like, I think that's kind of my, my favorite season. And whether it's like, bringing out the boots or the coats. I think I'm definitely like a coat and sweater person. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to that, but not when it gets like too cold out. I love the like happy medium of that, of sweater weather. Yeah, and Karina, you're in Los Angeles right now, right? So I don't even know if uh, fall exists over there. <laughs> I mean, I feel like all my friends there are like, oh my God, it's so cold and it's literally like 30 degrees. Um, <laughs> But what are your fall fashion uh, must-haves? Um, I am in LA right now, but I'll, I'll be in New York, which is very similar, of course, to Toronto weather. Um, so I'm looking forward to fall because I share the same sentiment um, that it's like my favorite, one of my favorite seasons. Um, but for me, because I'll be on set, I tend to lean into pieces that make me feel... Um, comfortable and also really confident and so um, a stable for me is a good blazer I'll always wear that on set whether it's with sweatpants or jeans hmm. yeah that's, that's awesome um one huge standout from the campaign that um I really related to and really liked the sentiment behind was what Ludi said um about uh being seen and being seen in big ways and small ways. And I really wanted to ask you firsthand, like what does being seen mean to you? And do you recall like the first time that you were, like that you really felt seen? Uh, being, I think being seen for me, uh, first of all, obviously it means to be acknowledged, um, but also it means to, to be reflected in another person. And you can learn more about yourself and someone's reactions to you and reflections to you. Um, I think that aspect of uh, relationships and communication where you're seen, mm. where you're heard, where everything you're trying to emote and express is being accepted is one of the most, I think it's one of the most wonderful things about life. And this is, I think, is what storytelling is all about. It's about the sharing. Um, like I... I tend to talk a lot, so you can stop me if I'm talking too much. But I do think <laughs> that uh, I hope you could do it in a gentle way because I think interrupting someone in the midst of a story or um, in a <laughs> way that they're trying to express themselves to be seen is really, mm -hmm. really hurtful and really damaging. So um, being seen, acknowledging it, being heard, acknowledging it uh, for me is like the one, one of the most magical and fundamental things about living. So in your current, um, you know, career, your personal life, like, and this goes out to all of you, like, do you still feel like you're consistently being seen, even as your careers grow and build? I can answer that. Um, I, I am noticing a bit of um, a difference. There, there are two different things where on one hand, um, I have rarely feel, felt seen in the work that we do. All of us work in film and television. And, 
as far as representation goes for indigenous folks, let alone queer indigenous folks, I, I have yet to see myself be represented on screen. And that's one of the, the personal missions that I have in, in my career and something that I'm wanting to achieve. Um, whereas on the other side of things on a, on a personal level outside of, um, of the work that I'm doing, I, I suppose that I, I do feel seen, but it's more so me um, stepping into who I am and, and being out and living who I, as who I am, no matter whether I'm on my res, whether I'm in the city, whether I'm surrounded by industry people on a film set. Um, I think for me, it's more important than ever to be my full self in every space that I go uh, and, mm. and that I'm present in. And so it's, um, I'm, I'm just noticing the, the differences of what that's, what, what that's like. And in moments I'm, I'm more seen than others, but there is such a power in that, in seeing yourself on screen or, or also another human meeting you and being able to connect with you where you're at. Okay, so I, I've got a confession. <laughs> Um, so I've been watching a lot of, uh, reservation dogs. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really cool because it's, um, it's so unique, right? Because you, you haven't, I haven't seen anything like it. Um, and there, there's parts where like when I'm watching it, I get a complicated feeling because I'm, I'm elated because I'm, I'm seeing something new. I'm learning lots of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time. I'm sad because I know that there's a lot, like there's just a lot missing there and people don't even know what they're missing because there's been such a cultural gap between what uh, traditional indigenous culture is like and what it's, you know, uh, assimilated to or transformed into, right? But this is definitely a unique, complex portrayal of what it's like, um, especially your character. But you were saying that like watching yourself on screen and I have my personal feelings about this, but um, like, do you feel more seen when you watch yourself on screen? It's a complicated thing. So what? I think for me, it depends because the character that I play in Reservation Dogs um, is, is not necessarily someone I'm very similar to. Uh, she's like way more badass than I could ever be in my real life. Um, she would be caught dead wearing that, that's for oh, sure. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I think that, um, I also have a little bit of a complicated relationship, like actually seeing myself, but being able to take a step back and see what that means and what that could have done for me as a young indigenous kid from my community and seeing our stories and not only historical stories of who we were pre-colonization, but like who we are now with complicated lives who are thriving and surviving and, and everything in between, um, I'm able to take that step back and, and have my inner res kid feel seen in some, in some senses. That's so cool. Everyone should check it out. I mean, the first, the first well, thanks few for the plug, Rudy. Really I know. Really good. <laughs> Um, so with all of that said, like, I know that this is a very like complicated, like, you know, there's a lot of moving parts, like actually see change in the enter entertainment industry, but what do you think one thing that could happen or change to, you know, help with indigenous stories, indigenous queer stories, um, and then beyond to anyone who feels like marginalized or tokenized? Um, like what's what's the fundamental thing that needs to change? I spoke about this a little bit with the Awaken Autumn campaign. Um, and this is something that I've spoken about in a lot of the work that I've done is that it needs to come from the top down. There can't only be p positions of diversity filled in the day players and actors and directors and writers. It has to come from people who hold positions of power. And I think if you were to, to hire a studio executive and it be someone from a marginalized community, your show will inherently be more diverse. It'll have lasting impacts and, and then there will be more um, 
there'll be more drive and, and demand for the story from the get-go as opposed to uh, filling slots with brown actors. Um, and so for me, what I want to see and what I know will create lasting changes by having people from marginalized communities, BIPOC folks, queer folks, LGBTQ folks in positions of power and in studios and networks. I really hope to see those changes and, you know, like all the work that you individually do um, and everything of yourselves that you put into your work and, you know, you share with your communities, I think is remarkable and amazing. Um, and I have a question for those, you know, like in the audience who are maybe struggling with their identities and struggling with how mm -hmm. to like actually be outspoken and, you know, speak up in meaningful ways. Um, the work that you do currently for your communities, the conversations that you do have that might be difficult and challenging, um, is that something that you are always comfortable with doing? What's some advice that you have for people who are, who are struggling to, to make that transition and really advocate for themselves? My personal um, feeling about it is it, it does start with yourself, um, taking care of yourself, um, which goes back to the mental health piece, um, but also educating yourself. And um, in doing that, I think you're able to remove um, your own blocks and biases to be able to become a clear channel to speak truth and to um, make way for change in that. And, um, you know, it isn't easy, I would agree with you. And I think um, it does take a necessary degree of courage um, and fearlessness, but that doesn't mean that the, the um, anxiety or the fear aren't there. I think it's about, um, again, circling back to what I said about taking care of yourself. Like, for example, a, a, a trick, if you will, that I learned from an actor, um, an actress rather that I just worked with on um, a show in Toronto, her name is Missy Pyle. What she does is she rubs her heart if ever she's feeling um, like it's closing or like um, she's getting nervous or she's getting in her head or, she's insecure, she rubs her heart and says a affirmation or a mantra to herself. Um, and I've now stolen that from her. And I can say to myself, if I'm, you know, um, starting to get fuzzy in my mind, like I accept myself and I love myself wholeheartedly and I'm here to serve a purpose and let, let, let me be open to that purpose. That is nice. Yeah. Once you do that, you just please. wear on your clothes. Remind <laughs> yourself to to uh, do that once in a while. I I, I learned something similar on a <laughs> Korean drama, where um, uh, where you go like this. I don't know if this is a, a real psychological thing, but it sure works. And then you just mm. pat yourself like that. I think it's called a butterfly hug. No, oh, that's nice. <laughs> That really we could, we could, we could start a routine. <laughs> we could do one of those um the recess exercises like in school. You rub, 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 hug yourself, you pat on the back, self high five. It really does five. come to down to that, Karina. Like it, it comes down to yourself and like finding it in yourself to be confident and to to know what you believe in and to not be scared of all the external factors that like might make, make you feel otherwise. Um, but yeah, I think especially like after the couple of years that we've just had um, and all of these issues that have been brought to light and all of the, you know, political uprise and the the amount of people on social media that are outspoken and sharing their stories, like all of those small things just contribute to like what we're aware of and like how we move through life being a little bit more aware. Um, so thank you guys for, for sharing those little tricks um, and like grounding exercises. Um, I think it really just comes down to, we should all meditate and we should all make sure that we <laughs> tell ourselves that we love, we love ourselves. Um, Karina, um, I watched a few of your interviews today and I noticed, um, you know, going back to storytelling, um, you mentioned that 
uh, growing up, you were very much drawn to fairy tales um, and stories that really shaped mm -hmm. your, your childhood. Um, are there any, like, I know that you're working on a bunch of projects right now um, and you have many under your belt, but are there other stories or a story that you have yet to tell that you would like to? That's a big question. Um, there's so many stories that I'm interested in exploring and I'm fascinated by. I think what I can say is that the um, two features that I'm developing at the moment, I'm really really excited about those stories. I, I can't necessarily say a lot about them, but it does feel as though all the um, experiences and lessons and, and growing pains um, that have led up to this point are to equip me with the tools and the language and the understanding and the wisdom and just the even tricks to open up and be able to tell those two stories. Yeah, um, Ludi, like, what about you? Um, knowing that you've had a busy couple of years and you're working on some things um, currently, um, how do you use your um, activism um, to help tell the stories that are on screen? Um, yeah, I, I think it's just so natural. It's not even like if you have to coin it with a word, it's activism. But activism to me is just sharing what you've experienced that no one else has ever seen or um, or um, because I'm in a position to portray some of these stories that people aren't given the opportunity to tell. So that's what I do. And, and it could be activism. It could be anything else. It could be my personal story. It could be um, other people's that I've I've had the had the privilege to share um yeah things that just um connect with people funny stories um and also i think i'm really excited about the things that are coming out now as you guys as you guys have probably heard that um over the weekend shang chi just blew up absolutely destroyed like pummeled demolished whatever you call it taken apart the box office and mm -hmm. some of these stories that opens the door to so many stories that hasn't been told yet. And I'm most excited about telling stories that I don't even know about. Like when I was a kid, I'm really excited to hear stories that my, my grandma, my mom, adults just make up on the spot because I feel like they're just piecing things together. And for me, that part is important is to save some room for grace in order to give rise to the surprise of what the future may bring you because no one knows what's going to happen down the road and at that point you have to you know encapsulate it personalize it and be able to tell that so i'm uh, looking forward to what i don't know is going to happen and devery like what are you looking forward to like that you don't know will happen yet but you you really want to happen I want to see the Indigenous film community explode. I'm excited for the day where I don't know everybody in the inner circles or because it's as much success as we're receiving with Reservation Dogs and as many people who are working on it, there are even more who have been trying to kick the door down for decades and so many other Indigenous people who've come before me who, um, who paved the way for me to be here and to be working and for our stories to be heard and so it's my hope that we're just scratching the surface that we're yeah. we're paving a way for as for as many stories out there as there are indigenous storytellers I don't want to know everybody I want to look and, and learn and and find out and see from hear from all of these different indigenous storytellers who um who are coming up yeah, thank you so much, guys. Like, uh, I have one more question um, before we're, we run out of time. Um, and that is, what does it mean to be a trailblazer in your industry? Um, Karina? <laughs> that's, that is a, that's a hard question. I think, um, I mean, first, thank you for describing us like that. I think it, I, I don't take it lightly. It's a, it comes with a huge responsibility to um, 
earn that title and to pave the way and to um, do that, I think it goes back to the 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 self work piece that you know we keep reiterating on this call because it truly is so important to work on yourself and to educate yourself and to work on your craft and to um, never stop uh, evolving and learning so that you can pave a way for the next generation and so um, that you can, uh, or rather so that I can um, honestly feel like I deserve that title. Uh, Ludi? Oh, um, well, I think personally it means a lot of screwing up, a lot of making <laughs> mistakes, tons of failing, um, and then somehow in the end it's all worth it. Um, I, you, you know, I've heard that trailblazing means, I read this somewhere, I think trailblazing, I heard, well, to me, it seemed like, it seemed like there's so much veil involved. I thought it meant uh, you, you walk a trail and then you set fire to whatever is behind you because there's no turning back because it's like knowledge. Once you know something, you won't be able to forget it. You've burnt that bridge. You just have to walk forward bravely um, and just face whatever's coming, right? Um, and then I actually learned that trailblazing meant something entirely different. <laughs> I, I learned that blaze actually means marking, not setting things on fire. So what it actually means, I think, is marking trees so that the path you walk first, others can follow. And that's called blazing. And I think both work because sometimes, yeah. like uh, Corinna was saying, that sometimes you have to work on yourself and you're the only person that, that you should be the only person that believes in yourself the most. And you just have to go at it and not second guess yourself. Otherwise you don't get anything done. Um, but what's nice is not to burn the path behind you so others can follow um, so that you have other people with you that you can compete with, that you can share with, that you can walk the same path down the road because man, life is lonely otherwise. Yeah, well, Debra, do you want to say final words or have your thoughts been echoed by, by these two? Sure, I mean, I think both what Karina and Ludi have said is extremely resonant. Um, I also am humbled by being called that. Um, I also carry that with such a sense of responsibility um, and I know that I carefully consider my dada, my family, my community in, in every decision that I make uh, career-wise, personally. Um, and it's, it can be a lot of pressure. And also remembering at the end of the day that I'm, I'm but one person and I can only bring my truth to every experience that I do. Um, and, and I love that image of of marking trees, but also like blazing it. I think <laughs> it's, uh, I, th I think that was a really, um, a really powerful image. And one that I understand where it's, when there isn't a, a path marked and laid out for you, then, then it's so easy to, it's so easy to make mistakes or not necessarily make the right decisions um, in the moment, but it's, it's all part of the process and it's all in the hopes that you will be surrounded by your community on the other side of it, because what is the point of breaking through a glass ceiling if you're gonna be alone on the other side of it? You wanna bring as many of your community members through with you so that you're creating a, a whole entire subset and not an entire industry within that, so. That's a, Man, I'm so inspired by you too. Off. Thank you so I know. much. Yeah, you guys are incredible. And yes, of course, like, putting a lot of responsibility on you guys, but <laughs> it's also, you know, me and the, the people watching, like, we just want to thank you for everything that you are, everything that you do, everything that you continue to do. Can't wait to see what you guys work on in the future. And, you know, on behalf of myself, the team at Holt Renfrew, everyone, uh, thank you to everyone tuned in for joining us this afternoon. Um, and I have to, to say, um, to learn more about the campaign, you can visit holtrenfrew.com. And for everyone that entered the Awaken Autumn email contest, um, Holt is going to draw a winner on September 10th. 
So thank you once again to everyone. Um, it was a pleasure speaking to you guys and I wish you all the best for fall and beyond. Aww, thank on. you for having Thanks me. For conversation. I'm going to so be grateful. doing this now. Yeah, <laughs> all of this. <laughs> this. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.